Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last video what we did was we built a backend using Python, specifically building out an API, and then also what we did was we built a front end using React, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Now what if we wanted to take that one step further? What if I'm working on a project with another person and they're using a different uh, computer than I am? Maybe I'm using Mac and you're using Windows. What do we do? They have to install Python on their machine, they have to install Node on their machine. It can be super annoying, especially when trying to test across different environments. So what we can actually use is something called Docker. Now Docker is a way to containerize your applications. And you may be saying, Sean, what the heck is a container and what the heck is Docker? Well, uh, let's say the holidays are coming up and you wanna ship something to a loved one as a present. So let's invent the post office. And the post office says, we can ship things but we don't want you to bring loose things to us. We don't want loose books and jewelry and money. No, no, you need to put it in a box. Um, so if we extend this analogy, let's put an envelope. Now, there's gonna be a cost for me to move this from one place to another. And depending on how far it is and how much it weighs, I'm gonna give you a price. And you can think about that like your stamp. Now, whatever you put inside of it is up to you. So the container can support any programming language, Ruby, Python, Java, Golang, doesn't matter. And the reason we really want to do this, like I said, is because of portability. You want to be able to test this on your development, your production, your staging environments, and not run into any issues, especially when you're running it on different machines. And we're not going to get into Kubernetes yet and how we scale things and all that. But what I am going to show you is how we can easily package up these applications we built in the last video and Dockerize them. So let's get started. All right, so how do we Dockerize the application that we wrote? So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go into our backend and we're gonna to have to run source vnv bin activate. Now this is going to get us into our virtual environment and when we run like pip list, you're gonna see that we get all of our packages from our application. So in this app.py, all these we used for our API in the last video, this is gonna be here for us. now. What do we need to do to actually get this to be what's called a requirements.txt file? The reason we need a requirements.txt file is because if you were to run this as a Docker container, it won't know, like let's say I give this Docker container to you, the Python application is not gonna know that you have a virtual environment, right? It's gonna say, I need these packages to be able to run this application. And if you're on a Windows machine, you don't have these. So we need to be able to find a way to contain all of our dependencies. So what we do is we run pip freeze, and then we redirect this output, which is just redirecting in standard output of what happens when we run pip freeze, to a file called requirements.txt. So when we run this, you're going to see that a new file is created and it has all of our dependencies or pip packages uh, with the version associated with it. So now that we have that, what we need to do is we need to start writing our Docker file. Now. To create a Docker file, all you have to do is run touch Docker file with a capital D, and that'll create a Docker file that is recognized by Docker. So what we're essentially doing at this step is we are containerizing our application. So we're pretty much taking it and packaging it up. So if I give it to somebody else, they can just run a Docker command and it'll spin up for them and they don't have to worry about installation, virtual environments and all this crap, right? So what we can do is say from Python 3.12 slim. Now you're might be wondering what this even is, so and what does the from command even do? So if we run Python 3.12-slim, you'll see that Docker Hub pops up, and this is really gonna say, hey, you can run the Python base image, which means when you run this on any computer, it's gonna support Python. It's gonna pull that image down and use it as a container. And then we're gonna, so we're saying from the base image, do something on it. So we could actually create a comment here if we wanna make this into kind of like a step list. We could say step one, use official Python uh, base image, right? And then in step two, what we need to do is we need to define a working directory for the container. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So what we're gonna say is, let's call this work directory, and then we'll say um, app, 
right? So app is gonna be our working directory. And then we're going to copy the requirements.txt file we created into the Docker container. So it's a copy requirements.txt file into container. How do we do that? Well, we have to say copy requirements.txt and then a dot. So this pretty much says mount or take the requirements.txt file, which is in this directory already, so we don't have to do anything like searching through other directories for it. It's already in here at the same level. And then we do this dot. So it's going to mount it to the route or it's going to copy it to the, the root directory in the uh, image. So this will be called step three. And then in step four, we're going to install the dependencies on the container or pip packages. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to use a run command, which means in our Docker container, it's gonna run something in the terminal. So we're gonna run pip install dash r requirements dot txt. So what this will do is literally run this command in the terminal which will install all the packages almost like we use in the virtual environment when we run pip install. Next, in step five, we need to copy the Flask application, which is what we wrote the, the API in, into the container. So now let's copy, and we're gonna say dot, dot. So we're copying this entire directory, which is the backend, into this container at the root, just like we did with the requirements file. The next thing we need to do is we need to expose a port. Now, why do we need to expose a port? Well, we need to do that so it's accessible through the local host. Remember when we ran 127.0.0.1 colon 8080? That allowed us to actually view the web page and connect with our other API. We need to do the same thing. So we're gonna run expose 8080. All right, so now that we exposed port 8080, what we need to do is move on to step seven, which is going to be setting our environment and variables. So setting flask and v vars. And what we're gonna say our first environment variable is, is gonna be the flask app. And this is a standard uh, environment variable that's passed through um, flask. Then we're gonna say, flask run host and this is going to be set to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 aka local host and then we're going to say environment flask run port equals 80 80 oh my gosh i can't type 80 80 and then now that we have those exposed and we're going to be running in a port 80 exposing port 80 80 we can say step eight run flask app. Now, how do we do this? We're gonna say command, which is to run a command, flask, comma, run. So it'd be like flask space run. So now that we're in our terminal, we are going to run docker build dash t, and then we're gonna name our uh, image, which is gonna be called backend, and then we're gonna just do dot to build everything in it. So you can see that it was successful, all gravy. Now, if we run Docker images, you can see that this backend has been created. And now we all, all we have to do is really run Docker run. And then we're gonna say dash P, which defines a port. We're gonna run this in detached mode, which means it's running in the background, so we don't have to keep it running in our terminal. And then we're gonna say expose port 8080 um, and map it to 8080 and call this the backend. So now that we run this, you're gonna see that we have this uh, container up and running by running Docker PS, which is all of our live Docker images that are up and running. If you do the dash A flag, you're gonna see even if stuff is exited. So if you've had any containers that have failed or crashed, you'll see those as well. But now let's go to our web browser and you'll see when we refresh this, we get a roster. Now let's pass something like Yankees. We're gonna get the Yankees roster, right? So now we have our Python application in a Docker container. What about our front end? Well, if we open our front end and in the terminal, we say uh, ls and then we do cd app, we're gonna run um, touch Docker file. So we're gonna do this in our actual React app, which is in the front end directory. So let's open up our Docker file and then we're gonna look at our Python one and compare it to what we need to do with JavaScript or React. So in this case, we're gonna say step one, 
one use uh, node base image, and we're going to say from like we had Python dot three dot twelve slim. We're going to say from uh, node fourteen, and that's just going to say from version fourteen of node. We're going to use that base image. Next, we're going to say give us the working directory. So we're going to say step two, uh, define work dir, and then we're going to say uh, work directory, and we're going to say we're going to call this app like we have here, and then we're going to say step three. Uh, copy over packages. How do we do that? Remember we did pip install requirements. JavaScript a little bit different. We have to say is copy uh, package dot json package lock dot json and then copy it to the working directory. Um, you know what? Let's not even use app as a working directory. Eh, no, let's keep it. And then we're going to say uh, step four, uh, run, um, or I should say install packages. And this will say um, run npm install, which will install the packages associated with the app. Then we're going to say copy entire, entire React app. And then we're going to say copy dot dot, just like we did here. And then in step, you know, I didn't define my step five, step six, um, expose port 3000. So we're going to say expose 3000. Then step seven, which is our final step, we're going to say run app. Now, if we look at our package.json, we know that we use uh, npm start, which actually runs React scripts start. So we'll just run um, cmd npm start. Now, to build this, we're going to say docker build dash t front end dot. So it's going to build this for us. And those are three of my seven dogs barking. So that's all fun. Um, okay, copying, taking a while. But it did cache some of the changes we made. So that's good. And it's because I built this like an hour ago when I was just testing things. Um, so now let's run docker run dash D, which does it in detached mode, dash P, and then we're going to use 3000 map to port 3000 front end. Let's run this and then say docker ps dash A. And we're going to see that the front end has been up one second. So now my suspicion is that if we go to port 3000 or want this web address, we refresh it, it should actually load something for us. Hopefully. Now, ah, OK. Oh, I know why. I know why it did this. So this actually goes back to React, and I don't really want to troubleshoot React right now. But you can see we don't have um, semantic UI React in here, which that was a dumb, dumb part on my fault. So we're going to say npm install uh, semantic UI React semantic UI CSS. This will um, drop these into uh, the package.json file, and now we're going to have to rebuild our Docker file. So we're going to run Docker rm, and we're going to pass the, the force flag because I don't care. I don't really care if it stops it. And we're going to say Docker rmi front end, which deletes the image altogether. And then we're going to rebuild this. And this isn't really a tutorial on Docker, so if you guys aren't following, I actually recommend you probably watch a Docker tutorial, or if you like how I explain things, I can even create a Docker tutorial if you want. Um, but I feel like this is kind of giving you guys some like, hands-on knowledge or some, something you would actually use uh, than just being like, this is Docker run. This is what the from command does. This is how you practically use Docker. It took 121 seconds, and that's so impatient because that's only two minutes. That's how good we have things nowadays. So now that it's created this container, we can say uh, docker run in dash D for detached, expose port 3000, map it to port 3000 locally, 
run the front end uh, image, and then voila, we should be able to run our React app. All right, cool, create crazy. So let's uh, let's see if it connects properly to our API. Yeah, it does. And the reason it does this is through Docker Networks. I'm not going to really walk through Docker Networks in this video, but essentially what it does is if you run Docker Networks or Docker Network, you're going to see that there is, oh, I always forget what it is, Docker Network LS. You're going to see that there is a uh, bridge and a host network. And you can actually inspect these. So if you want to say Docker network inspect and then say host, you can see that this is the entire config for it. So I'm not going to get into too much how Docker networks work, but essentially now our containers can communicate and we're running this in a Docker container. So this is extremely useful because we package our applications. Now we can do some crazy stuff like uh, using Kubernetes to scale it. So if multiple people come to our site and we want to actually host this on infrastructure in the cloud or wherever, now we can do that because we have it in containers, which is pretty sweet, right? So that's a video. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. And maybe we'll talk about how to push this up to Kubernetes. Sound good? All right, see you guys.